two Jed sisters. There's a lot of jets out there. So yeah, this is a uh, rough cut 16 footers. Now I ordered two by six 16 footers and he messaged me this morning and said, you can have two by eights for the same price as the two by sixes. And uh, I'm not about to turn down some uh, extra board feet, that is for sure. So, so the reason for this is uh, on the shelters over there, we just boarded the back walls with uh, windbreak paneling, and it does fine. It's it's okay. It's a little uh, it's a little flimsy. It's a little yeah. I just don't quite trust it, and my big reason right now for that is, uh, as you notice, the back wall. The in-between posts, I pulled them all. Because um, they didn't go, they didn't go in right. So they kind of, when they went in, they went, they kicked off. So it wasn't going to work with the wall. So I'm going to put the boards up. And I'm going to brace the boards, strap them all together, so they're all kind of one. And then at a later stage, if I want to drill and put in a post, uh, like a drilled in post, not a hammered in post, we can do that at a later stage. Just from the outside, I might not do the tin right away, but we'll see. But I need to get it boarded up because we need this pan here soon. So yeah, I'm gonna try and get past these bales with this load and uh, get situated. Here's young Jeremy. So yeah. Uh, today is Thursday. And uh, you all know what, what was happening today. So the uh, my mom's funeral was amazing. If that could be said for a funeral, yeah. My oldest brother David did an incredible job, absolutely incredible job. Because um, as you all know, you're trying to, well I'm having a hard time here. You're trying to uh, do the best you can to sum up within the time you're given somebody's life. And uh, yeah, nobody, Everybody knows you're not going to... Well, look at that. Well, we'll just switch you off. Um, you're never going to fit it all in, but you do the best you can. And uh, just to say, very proud of you, big brother David. Um, you did an incredible job. Mum would have been very, very proud to have that as her, as her uh, eulogy. Um, and we have FaceTimed with... Uh, dad and both brothers afterwards and they said the weather was there uh, the weather there was absolutely golden today storming last night cold and wet and then today was beautiful so couldn't ask for better thanks mom and yeah here sun is shining there is puddles and it's damp it's not the greatest <laughs> not to complain about having lovely weather but um yeah we're watching there's some cows, some of the young cows are starting to look really far along, so yeah. I wouldn't mind them cowing today. That would be that would be kind of nice, but um that minus five, minus ten is the kind of sweet spot. So anyway, I'm gonna get to setting up the next round of bales. He's taking eleven at a time. So he's got a few more loads to do until his our obligations are fulfilled. And uh 
part of that was the con the uh, there was two concrete jobs supposed to happen this year. Uh, the one got tabled, um, but we're going to honour our part of it. And he said he's quite happy because um, we're going to pour the rest of the concrete this year, like the other slab and the little calving uh, maternity pen facility thing that we were going to do. So yeah, so he's going to get because all these these bales were earmarked for him, so he can have them. And uh, got a bunch of bedding and a bunch of stuff to do, so let's get about our day. See you, Mum. Tell ya, Mum sure made it a great day. So, take advantage while the weather is nice. So, starting to get the backboards on. As you can see, that's how much of a fall is in the ground. This is not bad considering I just sort of dragged the yard. So I'm just going to uh, lay the boards where they're at. I may put a bottom board in here, but I'm not too worried. Because um, we will be filling this up once it's all in and built. Um, as long as we'll backfill snow or whatever around the edge there. But once it starts getting bedded, that'll close this in because it'll be the same along the side here. So yeah, probably going to put about another, at least four rows, I think, if not five. Um, just to get up to the shoulder height of the cows. Uh, so yeah, that wall and then this wall. Yeah, because it'd be nice to get that boarded up before we start calving. That way I don't have to worry about stopping them coming in here. Though I don't want them rubbing on these posts until everything is all framed in. So I probably will end up putting a barrier across there or something. Anyway, okay, I gotta go and put silage out. It's still Thursday. I'm telling you. If you don't believe in a higher power, then there's something wrong with you. It's still the end of February, and it's bright sunshine, and it's almost six o'clock at night. Beautiful. Critters are out having their silage. Big bright full moon in the sky. Honest to gosh. For a fact, this is bad. Let's find out together, will we? There's a wheel. Where that should be. The bearings have all emptied out. Yeah, that's awesome. Well done. Yeah. Well, bollocks. Well, not like I had anything else to do today. Nuggets. And well, as you can see, it made it home. Uh, so, thanks to the gathering of odds and ends from the other farm, I was able to round up enough bearings. Uh, so yeah, this is the smaller outer one. The inner one, uh, the inner collar for the inner bearing was completely missing, completely disintegrated. So whether that's what happened, it fractured and came apart. So, like I said, I managed to put it together. Um, 
I don't have any seals. So, I'm gonna pack it with grease and I'm gonna do an old farm trick. Uh, find some uh, rope and I'm gonna wind it around the back side and bang it, like jam it up against there. And then I'm just going to, I gotta clean that out because the cover, uh, I actually managed to find the cover afterwards. It was halfway along the field, it had popped off. So I'm gonna clean that out, repack it, fire it back full of grease and put the cap back on. And then I'm gonna pull this side off and recheck it because it was checked over last year. Um, but I'm just gonna make sure it's good to get me over the next couple of days. And then next time I'm in town, I'm gonna go and get a set of two seal and bearing kits. Because I think these are just like a standard uh, implement kit. Because I had a bunch of these. Um, dang it, the stuff's still in the tractor. Um, it came from these boxes here. That's not the same one. But yeah, like I have a bunch of these. So, you don't need to see me doing this. It's kind of just normal stuff. Um, it's almost ready for cleaning out. Uh, but it is due uh, greasing up the big bearings. So that's to do. Okay. Let's get on. So... It's not, you can barely see it. You can hear it. So, as you can see, it's got grease, but what's more telling is there's a dampness. So basically the seals were wearing out is what's happened. So, um, talking over with Mrs. Piper of the Dugs, the boss lady. Yeah, you can tell. Normal implement tire. The kind of tires that are supposed to be on this. These, but they are heavy and that's probably why this one went out first because this tire, this wheel is a lot heavier. As you can see, I have used the Ed Gosling Big Square Baler Twine and uh, wrapped it around the spindle to create a bit of a dust seal. So that should keep it going for a couple of days. Yes, I will be changing it because as we see, that one's damp. So, uh, but squirrel, back to the story at hand. So every time I go out to get bales from the field, uh, it's three miles. It's a half mile north and it's a mile out. And then a mile back and a half mile. So it's three miles every time I go to get two bales or three bales when I was taking the loader with me. Um, so I've done at least a hundred trips out there because I did haul some of those bales that were out there down to the second bale yard but the rest of them i've been just bringing them in as i need them because the orange tractor has been gone for drum roll please since the 7th of november yes it's the end of february now and it's still not back so almost four months now they said they've got it back together but they still don't have it solved yes piper dog's not happy but the orange tractor is the only tractor that's fit to take the big trailer out there and load it and bring it back because I can't very well take two tractors out at once because so, I could pull the big trailer with big blue, but then I'd have to come back and get a loader tractor. Anyway, where I'm going with this is that means this old cadger here since last summer, because uh, Liam, gathered the bales off the hay field with this 
And then while it was in getting serviced, ready for winter, I set, reset everything. So yeah, basically all you do is you jack it up, you pull the uh, split pin, you just give the nut another half turn until she beds up, pack the lid full of grease again, because these are non-greasable hubs. So basically all you do is, you fill that thing as full as it will go, you jam the front of the casting as full of grease as you go, and then you hammer that on and that pushes grease back in. Yes, I know people. Most hubs are greasable, these ones ain't. So you'd basically just pack them. Anyway, so it was done at the end of summer. Checked everything over. Well, fall, end of fall. I checked everything over. And so technically this thing has done about 400 miles. Yeah, half of those miles are with a bale in the chamber and a bale on the forks. So there you go, 200 miles fully loaded. When you make it sound like that, no wonder the wheel fell off. Bugger me, pardon my French. So, yeah. So I'm gonna tighten this up, pack it with grease. And like I said in the previous bit, I'm gonna uh, get two brand new kits. Uh, the bearings are still good. Like I said, I checked them out. Those are brand new bearings in there. So I probably will just reuse the bearings, but I have to put uh, new, uh, new seals on both of these and change these bearings out. Uh, la, 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 la. Where was it going? Um, I, I'm lost, absolutely lost now. Uh, you know, it just depends because the one bearing you have to hammer it on to the spindle Depends getting it off if I don't bang up the cage and stuff. I can reuse that one But this one will be this one will be garbage because like I said It's really hard to see it There's a tiny waggle But not a lot there you go You can see that Anyway, I'm gonna tighten this up, fang her full of grease, and then get her, get there, everything else greased up. So here we go. Ah, oh, I tell you, once you're starting to get through the doldrums of winter, ah, uh, you, you can feel it. So this is Sunday. So uh, this is two weeks post uh, when we lost my mum. Um, Last Sunday we had my older cousin Alan, who lives nearby, came for a visit with his uh, wife Marla and son Coyle and his partner Ashlyn. And then uh, today we just had cousin, his youngest brother, cousin Colin, and his wife Christy. And there we got Ian, come for a visit. So it is now 6.30 at night and I'm mixing up the second load of silage and yeah, it's still light. It's glorious. <clears throat> so yeah, it'd be lovely to have a visit, especially on the the uh, tougher days. So yeah, just noticing that out. It's still so nice out. It's still cold, but it's nice. I don't often bring you all in here into the our humble abode oh yeah this was one of my favorite parts of our build we put this dry beam in here there's no nails or screws in it anywhere it's all done with wooden dowels and yeah lots of uh, memorabilia and historic stuff on it anyway what I was going to show you was and at some point I am meaning to do a uh, biography the history the family history how we ended up in Canada and such like. And I kind of thought because uh, of what had transpired with losing mum, we kind of touched on some things. So mum and dad started off at another farm and then they moved here and I was born here. So the farm did not look like this when they got there. 
it had, a, it had to put a lot of work into it. Most of these buildings were added on by mum and dad. Uh, namely, Silas Pit. Uh, I think they put this shed up. Dad'll correct me. I know we put this shed up because that was in my lifetime. And they put that shed up and this shed up. So this is the old original steading um, from the start of the barn because these are very old buildings and part of the house is still like the the walls are two or three feet thick stone so yeah and yeah that's a lot of silage to feed over what was it 200 and 220 to 240 milking cows sometimes three times a day so yeah that's where i was born <clears throat> so then we moved from there in 95 to here and uh, it did not look like this when we got here and it didn't look like this when we left there either so when we got here um, that shed and that workshop was there we put up this shed uh, we put up these bins and the dryer with the conveyor system um, we since then put up a 25,000 bushel bin here and then we took this bin and put it up on some rings and a hopper. So it ended up going from 6,000 to 9,000 bushels here. And then we had a bunch of fertilizer bins, uh, like the epoxy bins here. And there was another two here, I think. Jeez, my memory's getting bad. Um, so yeah, that's where mom and dad were living before they retired. Now, None of these bins in the dryer are there. None of these bins are here. And none of these bins are here. These bins are all here now. But the big bins are still sitting here. So this is just an open yard now. And then they've put up some more uh, movable hoppers since then. So yeah, that was quite a few years ago because these trees, we planted them and they are quite big now. Fast forward. And this is the yard that we currently live in. So this was in 65. So when we bought this place in 2000, none of this, this was all dilapidated. There was nothing left here. So we basically pushed all that into that dugout and filled it in. We scraped all the topsoil out, started building the pens. That house is still inside this house. So I'm going to see if I can do this right because it's hard to do this through a camera. This wall here is this wall here. Yeah, we picked the house up and turned it and then added on to it. And then these little evergreens are uh, those massive evergreens there. So yeah, if I can think on it, uh, I'll put in the aerial photograph that Liam took with the drone to uh, segue from this. So yeah, like I said, at some point I will do a biography of more information, but I just thought while I was here, because uh, winter came back, it was zero degrees at daybreak. And it's to be minus 20 by midnight tonight. 20 degrees to drop tonight. Yeah, that's yucky. Anyway, these gotta go. So did I ever show you this? This is going back to one of my earliest videos. It's a video of this truck just been in a big wreck we hit a great big stag going up the highway at 110 it came right out of the ditch without even hitting the road right into the truck so they replaced the hood the whole front end Let's see if you can notice a difference Stand out to you 
Hands in the toe. Yeah. So I took it back to the shop, the body shop that did it, and they said, we used the uh, Dodge paint coats. Well, my brother-in-law is a damn fine body shop guy. And my cousin, my big cousin, is also a damn fine body shop guy. Owns his own body shop. Stopped in one day and showed him that and he was absolutely disgusted. And he said, I'll show you something. Went to his paint booth, because he has a full, fully kitted shop. And showed, and Dodge and Ram have like a dozen white paint coats. He said all you need to do is double check it, double check the year that the truck was made, double check the batch that the truck was from in the VIN number, and you would have found that color. So yeah, we now have a patchwork quilt truck. And the body shop are like, well we did it to uh, what we were told to do, so yeah that's fun. Asking my mum to send me the energy. Oh, this storm. Colorado. If you don't want your storm, send them somewhere else because they keep coming here. And we keep putting return to sender on them and they keep coming back. And it's coming right through this hole here. Even with that wall, it comes right over the top and straight in. So, I'm hauling in my uh, number one. Uh, this is uh, first cutting alfalfa mustard brome off of that field. They are solid, they are heavy, they're great to work with, and I'm building walls with them because I'll be using them down here anyway. So, yeah. It's, this is, this back corner here is where the cows all tend to calve. And it's where I want them to calve, but not right now because you can make that out it's the wind's just whipping in here so I'm gonna block off this back wall and then I'll get down here a little bit because it's not so bad once you get down to here because it's kind of behind this wall but I tell you one thing oh, oh I know Ed Gosling will uh, will share my pain I was uh, Getting these pens bedded, even though there was a chance of snow, but they needed bedded. And then I was putting uh, the feed straw bales in here that they can pick away at. They just like them, like I said. I'll stick them in there to save them eating their bedding. So I was putting these bales in. And of course these bales, because they're older, the uh, net wrap is kind of froze onto them. Pretty decent shape. Oh, I pinched one of those nerves under my shoulder blade. Oh my gosh, it even hurts to breathe. And driving over these bumps, frozen poops and chunks of ice. Oh, it brings tear to a glass eye. Oh. Anyway, I'm gonna keep doing this because I fed them early just in case it does snow that way they can get their silage all into them before it gets snowed on, because you all know as soon as it gets snowed on, they don't want to eat it. Look at that snow. Two bales high, and look how high that snow drift is, and I can thank my neighbor for that. And that snow bank comes all the way out to here. I could literally drive, I, could, I know I could drive the skid steer up it. I don't know about the tractor, I make it stuck to it. Anyway, I'm gonna pick away at this till supper time. And I also have a frozen sewage ejector. So I've got salt down the inside of the ejector line trying to thaw it out. Thanks to this warm, cold, warm, cold, warm, cold weather we've been having. So you can join me in the next segment or one of the next segments in the workshop later on tonight. Because today is Monday and I'll show you what has transpired. The temperature's dropping. 
Okay, so you can kind of see I got seven layers of boards up in the shelter there. Oh gosh, my hands going numb. Okay, going in the shop. Yeah, it truly is lucky dip. <sighs> yeah, this thing needs a new set of uh, rear remotes. It's one of the big ones, uh, especially this one. This one's leaking pretty bad. And I know you can get O-ring kits, but once you pull the, uh, sorry, once you pull the hoses out, it still leaks. Um, it's got leaks. It's one of these days, it has to uh, come in for some major, major, if we're gonna do that. Um, yeah, as you can see, everything is out. Why? Why is everything out? Well, you're probably all looking in that direction. Uh, I just watched a video. Um, uh, if I can think of it, I will put it in here. So yeah, um, so what I was doing was, uh, it was having a hard time selecting gears, uh, shifting into high. So as you can see, it's got slop, which is within the range for being an old tractor. Like I said, this tractor is as old as I am and has been taken as care of as, as much as I have. This is the bad one. Yeah. So these have probably never been greased and they are greasable. As there is a grease nipple right there. Um, so, probably just gonna end up rebuilding the whole thing, like replacing the shaft and the two uh, bosses, uh, pin and then the actual rod. The, uh, the reverser one seems really good. Um, and it's not as difficult to replace once you put everything back together. Yeah, like, the dashboard's a nightmare on this thing. This is just, it's just, it's a chore tractor. It's what it is. I just need to be able to get a gear. And I didn't have any road gear anymore. Now, it was low in oil. And I know this has uh, that, uh, what do they call that? Torque assist or whatever it is. The lever on the other side. I don't use it. It's in high all the time. Um, but to do with that, you need, the oil has to be up at top level. Well, this has leaked out. It's down at add, so I'm going to chuck some oil in it. So that should, if I leave the guard off, I should be able to still select the gears. Um, but I'll need to order up all the parts. And this is where it gets kind of embarrassing. This is how bad it got. That shows you how far out of the guard it was in to find high. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty banged up. Like I said, this tractor, just for those who uh, don't know, this tractor was literally, literally gonna be on the truck to the scrapyard. Uh, it's got blow by. It's been rebuilt. It's probably got way over 10,000 hours on it. But it's, it does what we need it to do most of the time. And it's simple most of the time to fix. So, I just gotta top it up with, with uh, liquid and uh, see what I can do with that. Cause I might be able to just, well, I don't know. I'll try and jimmy rig something. 
I'll give it some grease is what I'll do it. Uh, what I did realize, because uh, I was following the video, was uh, the parking brake is within the realm of what it's supposed to be doing. So it leads me to believe that the actual, uh, it's like a bird beak that sits into the gear. I think the, the beak part, the pointer is gone because it doesn't work at all. So at some point we'll dig into that, but I have to take the rest of the floor out to get to that. So anyway, thank you for watching everybody. Um, yeah, things have been off as you all know, um, but we're getting back to it. No babies on the ground as of Monday night. We're close. Storm, that should do it, but nothing yet. So, onwards and upwards. I'm gonna batten this thing back together. Uh, hopefully Mrs. Piper Doug makes it home safe and sound tonight because it's not great out, but it is what it is. Anyway, uh, fixing. This was the episode of fixing, eh? Okay. We'll see you all later. See you all next week. And don't forget to subscribe. Give it a thumbs up if you think on it. Come on, old guy.